Colin Bell here with Team Align, and in this video I'd like to go over how to set up your G Pro using the Align VT801 Bluetooth wireless adapter. This adapter is going to allow you to pair your fly wireless unit to your tablet or your cell phone. I've got an Android tablet here, but you can use an Apple device as well. The app is a free download from the Apple Play Store. And throughout the setup process, I'm going to be using my Futaba 18MZ. You can use JR Spectrum as well, but for this particular scenario, we're going to stick with the Futaba specific stuff. So throughout this video, I'm going to do some picture-in-picture -picture shots so you can see exactly what's going on with the transmitter, the tablet, and the swash plate on the helicopter all simultaneously, and hopefully this gives you an idea of how easy the G-Pro is to set up using the Align Wireless Bluetooth adapter. Here we go with the basic initial setup of the G-Pro using an Android tablet. I've got my Futaba 18MZ here already turned on, the model's on, and I've of course got my Align Bluetooth unit plugged into the G-Pro. I've downloaded the Align G Pro app already at the App Store. You can do this uh, through your Apple device, your iPad or your iPhone, as well as, like I've got here, the tablet or your Android cell phone as well. So we're going to use the tablet just so you can see exactly what's going on. So first thing you need to do is open the G Pro app or software. Up at the top you can see there's a device search button. That's what you're going to click to link your Bluetooth uh, to your tablet so you have access to the G Pro. So we'll search device, and the Align BTH01 will come up. Simply click down on that, and you'll get a screen that will prompt you to enter a password. The factory password is four zeros. You want to change this to something unique and personal to you, so when you're at the flying field, anyone else with a G-Pro won't have access to your unit by mistake uh, and make any changes while you're at the flying field, so this way there's no surprises four zeros and OK. Now you can see we've got access to the G Pro by the green connect lettering at the top and also the green dot. Uh, I'm going to assume this is a fresh setup. You've never used the G Pro before but all of your servos are plugged into the appropriate channels on the physical unit mounted to the helicopter. So we're going to go to the setup menu and we're going to create a new setting. This is telling us that all of the previous settings in the G Pro will be erased if we choose to create a new memory. And uh, for this instance, that's correct. We want to erase all previous data and start from scratch. So we'll click yes. Confirm new setting, yes. And there we go. The first thing that we're gonna take a look at is the receiver type. I'm using a Futaba SBUS receiver, but you've got multiple different options. You've got a conventional receiver, Futaba SBUS, which I've got here a Spectrum or JR satellite, which is DSM-2, DSM-X, followed by JR DMSS, and also JR XBUS. So we're going to make sure we have the appropriate one selected, in this case, Futaba SBUS. Right below that, you'll see a caution, and word for word, it says, the maximum and minimum endpoints of aileron, elevator, and pitch must be adjusted to 100 and minus 100 range of the sticks. So what that is telling us is that the stick movement in the transmitter has to match these bars and line up to make sure that everything is at 100 and 100 percent. And what I mean by that is, uh, I'll show you here just by example, we're going to go into our endpoint menu in the transmitter. You'll see that we have channel 1 here assigned to aileron. You'll notice here in the G-Pro app we've got channel 1 as aileron. When I move the aileron stick to the right, we should see this bar slide to the right. Not only do you want that bar to slide to the right, but you need that bar to hit exactly 100%. So if I move this and the bar moves to the left, we need to go into our transmitter and reverse that particular channel. So whatever the transmitter requires to get the output on the G-Pro to match your stick is what's required. Now you'll notice here that when I move the stick all the way to the right, the bar slides to the right and hits 100%. If we adjust the endpoint and the transmitter to 100%, move the stick back to the right, you'll see that we're only getting 93% on the G-Pro app. We want to hold the stick all the way over and then adjust it so that we get 100% on the G-Pro app. So 100% on the G-Pro app yields 108% on my Futaba transmitter. You need to do that exact same setting for all your channels. So you'll see for elevator, up elevator gives minus 100, 
down elevator will give 100%. You can also see that we've got channel 2 assigned to elevator in the G-Pro and channel 2 assigned to elevator in our transmitter. Now our pitch channel here, which isn't correctly assigned with the transmitter, is currently at channel 6. In my transmitter, I've got pitch assigned to channel 3. So to change that, simply click the channel number and you'll notice this drop down menu come up. Because I've got it set to channel 3 in the transmitter, we need to select channel 3 in the G-Pro app. Now we've got a warning coming up saying that there's two channels that are set to the, the same mapping in the G-Pro and it's going to stay in this adjustment menu until we change that. So my throttle channel now has to be mapped to channel 6. Now all of the channel mapping in the G-Pro is matched to what's going on in the transmitter. As you can see, we've got pitch channel going from minus 100 to positive 100. Now you can see down here in red, our throttle channel is at minus 113. Uh, the G Pro is letting you know by the red lettering that that's a value out of limits. I'm using the Castle Governor, so it's not a big deal. We don't have to concern ourselves with this. But if you're going to be using the Governor in the G Pro with a nitro model per se, you need to make sure that that lines up for 100 and 100 as well. You can also make sure that the tail gain and gyro direction, or gyro control I should say, works with your teroter gain switch. So when I flip the teroter gain switch, you'll see it go from normal mode, which is on this side, to AVCS or heading hold mode. And that's assigned to channel 5, which you could see here in the transmitter as well. To move on to the next portion of the setup, down here in the bottom right hand corner you'll see an arrow pointing to the right. Simply click that arrow and you've moved on to the second parameter. This is our gyro mounting direction. You'll see there's an arrow letting you know what the forward side of the gyro is. And the forward side of the gyro is the side that does not have the connector pins in it. This particular picture is how I've got mine mounted with the G-Pro forward face pointing toward the front of the helicopter. If you have it mounted separately, or differently I should say, simply choose the appropriate picture that matches your particular mounting setup. So once again, like I say, I've got it mounted with the G-Pro facing forward on the factory mounting pad for the T-Rex 700. Right below that you'll see uh, select blade direction, and that's the rotation direction of your main rotor. You need to make sure that you set that correctly. For most helicopters, it's going to be clockwise. For all aligned helicopters, it's going to be clockwise. But you may be flying a helicopter that scale or, or something that, for whatever reason, has a blade direction spinning the opposite way, counterclockwise. Now, this is going to ensure that all your tail order precompensations work in the right direction. If you don't have this set correctly, then it's only going to work against you. Now we can move over to our next setting, which is going to be our collective pitch direction and our swash plate type. The swash plate type in the transmitter for Futaba has to be set to H1 pure function. The actual physical swash plate type will be selected through the G-Pro app or software, either on your tablet or on your computer. But the first thing we're going to do in this menu is select our collective pitch direction. For the T-Rex 700, when the swash plate moves up, we get a positive pitch value. If you're using a helicopter uh, of a different brand, that gives you negative pitch when you move the collective stick up, then you simply need to select the other setting. But once again, for the T-Rex 700, I get positive pitch when the swash plate travels upwards. So that's the one that we want to select. Down here, the T-Rex 700 uses an HR3 120 degree ECCPM swash plate type, and that's what we're going to select. Now, over here on the right hand side, you can see the three channel reversing options. Now, if we have a look at the swash plate, when I move the collective stick up, you'll see that the swash plate doesn't actually travel up. So we need to go through here and try some different servo reversing combinations until we get the desired output at the swash plate. So we'll try channel 1. If I reverse channel 1 and move the collective stick up, the swash plate still doesn't travel perfectly up and down. So I'm going to set channel 1 back to normal and try channel 2. Now when I move the collective stick, you'll see the swash plate travels up. When I pull the collective stick back down, the swash plate travels back down. So now we know that we've got that set correctly and we can move on to the next step. Here is where we're going to sub trim all of our servos individually or actually trim the cyclic and the collective independently. 
I'll go to zero pitch just so you can see. My swash plate is level with everything at zero, uh, but just to give you an example of what this does, if we want to adjust the sub trim of servo one, I can slide this bar and you'll see the servo actually sub trim. Now that's our elevator or aft servo. So I'll go to zero, we can do servo two. Or you can use the plus and minus keys. And if we want to trim just the cyclic, we can do aileron and elevator, which will do both servos. So right here we can drag this over to the right. Or to the left to sub trim or cyclic trim independently. Or sorry, uh, non-independently. That's going to do both servos together, whereas servo 1, 2, and 3 are independently. So for my particular model, everything can remain at zero to get the trim that we want, which will allow us to move on to the next step. This particular menu is going to allow you to set your swash plate level at full positive and full negative collective. You'll see with the collective stick all the way at the top, we've got the positive side highlighted in the G Pro app, and if I move to the bottom, the negative portion gets highlighted, which allows us to make an adjustment there. Down here at the bottom is where we are going to set our cyclic pitch. So what we want to do is set zero pitch. That's going to lock out your collective stick so it no longer actually works the swash plate up and down. And then we're going to click set eight degrees of pitch. And that's our cyclic. So you can see that the swash plate is tilted all the way over. We're going to put a pitch gauge on our blade and then adjust this up or down until we get the recommended eight degrees of pitch. It's very important that you set your cyclic to the 8 degrees of pitch so that the G Pro can react how it was designed to react. If you use 7 uh, or 9 or 10 or something that's not recommended, then you're not going to get the max performance out of the G Pro. So please make sure that you've got that set to 8 degrees of pitch. Once you have your 8 degrees of pitch, you can hit the release button, and now you'll have full control of your swash plate again. The next setup requirement is going to be your Teroder servo and gyro. So we've got two Teroder servo types. We've got a standard digital servo and a narrow band digital servo. The narrow band servo is going to be the high-end Futaba servos. The standard digital servo is pretty well everything else. Uh, that's the type of servo that's included with the Align kits, and that's what I'm using in my 700. So we're going to make sure we select the appropriate servo type. If you select a narrow band servo when using a standard digital servo, over time you'll burn out the servo. So it's very important that we have that set to the correct servo type. Now the tear rotor or rudder direction is going to be set through the G Pro. As you can see here, when I move the tear rotor or rudder stick to the left, the tear rotor pitch slider actually moves in toward the tear rotor case. We want that to move toward the tail hub, and that's true for any line helicopter. Left tail rotor will always move the tail rotor pitch slider toward the tail rotor hub. So all you have to do is click on that setting and reverse it. And now you can see when I move the tear rotor stick to the left, the tear rotor pitch slider moves toward the tear rotor hub, which is exactly what we want. Right tail rotor or right rudder will move the tear rotor pitch slider toward the tail case. Now as you can see, when I move the tear rotor stick here, it highlights the appropriate travel limit, allowing you access to adjustment. So we'll move and hold this all the way over to the left and adjust that travel limit so we have maximum throw without binding. 99% on that side and when I go to the right we can do the same thing. And on that side we have 100. So those are close enough that I'm not going to worry about adjusting linkage to match those up. 1% is, is absolutely nothing to worry about. Uh, the next menu is going to be for our nitro helicopters, so this isn't applicable for this particular one, but uh, this would be the governor setup. And this is where you want your throttle value to match 100 and 100, just like we went over in the, the first setting. So that concludes the basic setup. As you can see here, it says before flight, please ensure that the helicopter movement and correct swash plate compensation are the way they need to be, and uh, we'll go over that and zoom the camera in just so you can see exactly how it's supposed to work. Before we go flying, we need to check that the G Pro gyro compensation direction is working correctly. Now, if you set it up how we just went through, there's no reason that it shouldn't. 
Uh, the G-Pro knows which way it's mounted, it knows what servos are controlling what, uh, the direction of your cyclic in relation to your stick, so everything should be uh, perfect. But we need to double check just to make sure maybe we missed something in the setup, um, or for some reason something's not working correctly, and you don't want to take your model off or attempt to take your model off off the ground and have something reverse, which is going to cause it to immediately crash. So when you look at the helicopter from the side and you tilt the helicopter forward, your swash plate should counteract that movement. So when we tilt the helicopter forward, you should see the swash plate tilt back a little bit. So I'm going to tip the helicopter forward and you'll see the swash plate tilt back. The exact same thing should happen for left and right. When you tilt the helicopter to the left, the swash plate should compensate to the right. And the same thing for left. Your tail rotor needs to be the exact same way. Like we just went over in the setup video, left tail rotor will move the tail rotor pitch slider closer to the tail rotor hub. So when you twist the G-Pro flybarless unit to the right, it should put a left input into the tail rotor. Once you've confirmed all that, you're ready to go flying. I hope you enjoyed the short video which touched on the basic setup of the G-Pro using the Align Wireless Bluetooth adapter. Uh, I didn't go into any detail with flight setup or tuning for 3D performance. I'll save that for another video. I wanted to keep this one nice and short, so if you just got your G-Pro, you're setting up your model and you're stuck at any points, hopefully this video will get you through them and make the setup process that much easier. So once again, thanks for watching the video and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email and I'll get them looked after.